Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I have here two tablets running Google Android 3.1 Honeycomb. Uh, the difference is that the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 has is running the version of um, Android that's been optimized by uh, Samsung to use the TouchWiz software interface on top of the uh, sort of default Android user interface, whereas the Toshiba Thrive is running Android 3.1 pretty much the way Google delivers it. First thing you'll notice is that the icons and fonts in the taskbar are a little bit different. These are the icons that you'll find on most Android Honeycomb tablets right now. Uh, they've been redrawn a little bit for the uh, Samsung TouchWiz version, and there's an extra icon as well for taking screenshots. That's something that's normally actually pretty difficult to do on an Android device unless you install developer tools or unless the manufacturer makes it easy, which they did with the Samsung. So you can take that picture, you can edit it, you can share it with friends, you can you know show your high score in a game. Uh, it's pretty difficult to actually do when you're using something like the Toshiba Thrive right now. Um, another thing that you'll notice that's different here is when you tap the notification panel, you get a, or the quick bar, quick panel, you get a much more detailed view here right away. You have to tap the button a second time to get some of those same details here on the regular Android interface. And some of the functions just aren't present. So here we've got a button to get to the detailed settings menu. We've got uh, notifications on or off, uh, screen brightness, auto rotate, Wi-Fi, and airplane mode. We've got all of those things here, but then there's also this bar that scrolls. We've got airplane, Bluetooth, auto rotation, sound, GPS, notifications, Wi-Fi. So you get a little bit more control without having to delve into the system level settings. Um, if you do that and uh, go into the settings, you'll see that they've also redesigned it for the, uh, the TouchWiz user interface. Works basically the same way, but you've got a brighter, easier to see user interface here and a couple of options that you don't normally get. So for instance, um, in the location and security section, Um, you just sort of have your standard uh, uh, options here, but there's a couple of extra ones with the Samsung uh, system. So, for instance, you can um, go into uh, the Find My so Phone settings and enable a Find My uh, Mobile Device feature. So if you sign up for a Samsung account, you can actually locate your device remotely. That's something that uh, Google doesn't currently offer, but that you can... Um, and you see the notifications are a little bit different too. That's something that you can do here where you, you would log into a website and your device would be sending a constant stream of here I am, here I am. So if it gets lost in the back of the cab, lost in your seat cushions, whatever, you can find it on a map. Uh, let's go back to the home screen. And the other thing that really sort of sets TouchWiz, well, one of the things that sets TouchWiz apart is uh, support for mini apps. These are little pop-up items. Most Android applications launch in full screen mode. So. You know, if we're going to uh, launch the web browser, it takes up the full screen. These mini apps sort of pop up in a smaller window and they work on top of other things. So in a much more sort of desktop operating system kind of view. Um, there's a couple of different mini apps. There's a task manager, a calendar, world clock, pen memo, calculator, and music player. The music player is probably one of the most handy because it lets you, from any application, whether you're surfing the web or doing something else, you can bring up the music player and pause, play, skip, rewind, adjust volume uh, without having to exit the program that you're currently using. So that's actually pretty nice. Some of the others I don't really find that useful, and the fact that it's not customizable in any way, you can't really change what's on here. So Samsung says these are frequently used applications, but I don't know how often you're really going to use the calculator or the world clock, for instance. Uh, calendar, the memo, uh, feature is kind of nice. Uh, another thing that's kind of annoying here is that that bar stays up until you minimize it, and that mini app stays up until you minimize it. So uh, if you're sort of used to the Android uh, function of just sort of pressing a button and everything changes, it doesn't quite work that way. Uh, another big difference is home screen widgets. We have these uh, special Samsung widgets uh, for um, what they call live panels. So you've got a weather widget here. There's a social widget, which shows you the latest from Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, or your email accounts, depending on what you sign up for. A calendar widget, which uh, takes you to a different calendar than you get from the uh, normal Google interface. 
a little bit brighter, a little bit easier to see what's going on. You get more text. Um, you've got different views for weeks, months. There's a list view. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, so overall, you know, it's very much like the Google Android interface that, uh, that Google designed, but it's a little bit different. It, uh, it adds some features that you don't normally get, including these full screen widgets, these social features, a couple of applications like the calendar, which I think are really nice, the uh, screenshot button, the mini apps, which, uh, you know, love them or hate them. I think there's, there's probably going to be a little bit of functionality that comes out of those, and perhaps we'll see additional mini apps at some point. And, um, Let's see, are there any other major features that I wanted to highlight in this video, anything that's really different? There's a couple of apps that Samsung has designed that are a little bit uh, different. I didn't get to go into into the last video I did. Uh, one is the... I'm actually looking at this upside down at the moment. Uh, so there's the Pen Memo app that we already saw. There's a photo editor, which it's pretty neat. Um, you can sort of edit any photo here. Just sort of select the area that you want to edit, uh, click done, and then you can say crop or do other changes to it. Um, there's no help menu. There's no uh, text description. So if you're familiar with image editing programs, you shouldn't have too hard a time figuring out that some of these are, um, you know, crop or um, effects. This one uh, brings up different color options, but it's, um, it took me a little while to figure out what button I had to press, and I was a little bit worried that I was going to lose um, changes that I had made. So um, once, you, once you play with it for a little while, it's nice to have an image editor directly on your device, but it, uh, it could probably be a little bit more intuitive out of the box. Um, some other things that you get here are a file browser. This is something that Google does not include by default, but you can... Um, use the Samsung file browser to uh, find movies, music, uh, camera photos, other things that are on your device. And what else is specific to Samsung here? They have a media hub, which I don't think I've set up here, but you should be able to go into the media hub and find uh, movies, TV shows, and so forth that you can download. Um, they're available for uh, for purchase. There's uh, next day TV programs sorted by TV show and uh, network and information like that. And uh, overall, you know, I think you can get movies from the Google Android market, but Samsung is one of the few companies that's done a pretty good job, I think, of really fleshing out their own media offerings on top of that. So um, it's it's sort of a value-added feature. It's not necessarily just bloatware. Um, I think it's going to be a matter of personal opinion whether some of this other stuff is bloatware. If you picked up a Galaxy Tab 10.1 before TouchWiz was available, this is an optional update, but it's going to show up in your system updates, and if you want to upgrade to the next version of Android when Android 3.2 is available, or 4.0, or whatever the next version is, eventually you're probably going to need to uh, go with the TouchWiz update. Um, and it's really, it's really not bad. Um, it might not be something that you're used to if you've been using um, Android without TouchWiz, but it doesn't, for the most part, get in the way, and it does actually add some functionality that's pretty nice. So. That's a uh, comparison of Android 3.1 with and without TouchWiz. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.